This is a topic that's been fascinating me ever since I could remember. I remember when I used to dabble into psychedelics, I often would have encounters with supernatural entities and I would also be seeing visions of other worlds that I couldn't explain. And for the longest time, I never knew why these types of substances could link us into the unseen world until I gained more understanding looking back at everything. And today we're going to make this connection very concise and clear so you as the viewer can see the spiritual component to things such as psychedelics. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, I want you guys to give this video a like. It really helps in the algorithm. Subscribe to my channel down below if you are new and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. The link between psychedelics, LSD, and other mind-altering substances in relation to supernatural encounters with entities seems to be far too common. In fact, a study was done that showed that 46% of ayahuasca takers encounter supernatural entities, as well as 36% of DMT takers, 17% of LSD takers, as well as 12% of psilocybin takers. Numbers like these are simply too high to just ignore, so the question is, are these encounters simply delusions of grandeur, or could there be a supernatural element to these mind-altering Altering substances. From a scientific perspective, let's take a look at the neurological effects of what LSD as well as magic mushrooms would do to a human being. Mind-altering substances like this maintain their effect by altering serotonin levels in the brain, specifically the 5-HT2A receptor. A randomized control trial was published on the National Library of Medicine, which documented psilocybin being linked to mystical experiences. However, the conclusion was not finding the link between the substances and the supposed spirit world, but more so a quest to conduct scientific investigation investigations of the causes and the consequences. However, what if I told you that the answers to the scientific investigation is actually found in the world's most popular book known as the Holy Bible? Skeptics often like to discredit the Bible stating that it is outdated and not relevant for current discussions today. But when you really dive deep into these scriptures, you will see that the answers have been in there the whole time. Revelation 18:23 speaks about the downfall of Babylon, highlighting that the light of the lamp will shine in you no more, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. The Greek word for sorcery in this context is called pharmakia, and oddly enough, it's where we get the word pharmacy from. Isn't it pretty odd that a massive enterprise like the pharmaceutical industry would use their root word off of something that's derived from witchcraft and sorcery? This tunnel will lead you down a deeper hole of knowledge than you expected, but at the end of it, you are going to see how spiritual these mind-altering substances really are. Let's take a look at various religious texts that document the correlation between these substances as well as the supernatural world. In Hinduism, there's a book called the Rig Veda, which discusses what seems like a certain type of elixir that was used to communicate with the gods. The transformative power of this substance would allow people to have communication with otherworldly entities. Another religious group that mentions this are known as the shamans. In the Ayahuasca Experience by Ralph Metzner, it states that the ayahuasca experiences which involves ingesting a substance are designed to confront fears and traumas in profound spiritual experiences. Further detail is given where they conclude that ayahuasca use in Amazonian tribes involves participants with having encounters with both healing spirits as well as darker entities. Another shamanic literist known as Carlos Castaneda also affirmed this same pattern. Castaneda's writings in the teaching of Don Juan, a yaqui way of knowledge, detail the use of psychoactive plants, going into detail about the dual nature of encounters in the spirit world, where one may meet their allies as well as their enemies. Another religious group that also practices this would be known as the Native American religion, where they would undergo peyote rituals, which is the ingestion of a certain mind-altering substance, in order to communicate with spirits as well. In the book Peyote and Other Psychoactive Cacti, it details the use of peyote in Native American rituals as being intended to facilitate visions where they are guided from spirits as well as encounters with malevolent forces. Another religion that does this is the religion of voodoo and Afro-Caribbean traditions. In Divine Horsemen, the Living Gods of Haiti, it details about certain voodoo practices which involve substances that alter consciousness which once again allows them to have contact with benevolent and malevolent spirits. Undergoing the possession state of this ritual is said to reveal dark truths about oneself. And the final most popular religion that speaks about this would be the Orphic Mysteries, which is an ancient Greek religion. In the Orphic hymns written by Apostolos Athanasakis, it details about an initiation in Orphic traditions where they use substances to alter their reality. These substances were very sacred to them and it allowed them to facilitate contact with dark forces from the underworld. Aside from religious texts, we even have modern examples such as the former CEO of Apple, Steve Jobs. 
Even Steve Jobs, a technological innovator, recounts supernatural experiences on LSD in his autobiography. Steve Jobs was quoted in his autobiography saying this, Taking LSD was a profound experience, one of the most important things in my life. LSD shows you that there's another side to the coin, and you can't remember when it wears off, but you know it. It reinforced my sense of what was important, creating great things instead of making money, putting things back into the stream of history and of human consciousness as much as I could. Steve Jobs accredits a lot of his innovations to these mind-altering substances, which shows a very interesting parallel to the supernatural realm as well as highly advanced technology. This is quite interesting to me because one would wonder if he got the idea for the Apple logo during one of these LSD encounters, since the bite of the apple is symbolic for Satan's temporary victory over humanity by allowing sin into the world. Upon seeing the dark entity encounters in relation to these mind-altering substances in many of these religious texts that we just looked at, it begs the question if this logo was initiated by malevolent beings. It seems like all of these examples document supernatural experiences by hijacking the natural law of physics through the gateway of mind-altering substances. However, we learned that drugs are a form of sorcery, so is it impossible to access this realm? without engaging in witchcraft? Not necessarily. Throughout the Bible, there are countless examples of men having supernatural encounters and being in the supernatural realm under the permission and authority of God. For example, Ezekiel's vision of the divine chariot as well as Apostle Paul's supernatural experience while he was on the road to Damascus, which illustrates how God sovereignly reveals himself as well as his plans. However, seeking spiritual experiences outside of God's permission by the blood of Jesus Christ can lead to very fatal consequences. This desire to explore the spiritual realm independently can often lead individuals into what I just mentioned like sorcery in Revelation 18.23. John 10.1 emphasizes this where Jesus gives us a word of caution. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Here, Jesus is the door and the only legitimate way to access supernatural experiences. Entering the spirit realm without his authority is akin to trespassing, which opens oneself to deception and danger. True spiritual encounters must be initiated by God, where he protects us by his divine authority as well as his guidance. We know indeed that overriding Jesus' authority into this supernatural world is in fact trespassing because all of these different religious texts never fail to mention the malevolent forces that they encounter while being in the spiritual realm. However, when God initiates you into the spiritual world, it will always be for his purpose and not because of your own will. And no man of God in the Bible ever had a malevolent encounter with a demonic entity when God put them in the spirit. In fact, the prophet Daniel had an encounter with an angel only where they described the battle between them and a demonic entity known as the Prince of Persia. However, it was from an angelic perspective merely discussing the battle and not exposing him to that malevolent force. That's because God is holy and pure and he will not initiate you into being harmed by evil. However, being outside of God's protection does open you up to these demonic doors. Another example would be the correlation between mind-altering substances and suicide. Another PubMed study was published this year about the correlation between suicidal thoughts and behavioral issues in relation to untreated illicit substances. Users. While the substances were about meth and heroin specifically, they still fall under the psychoactive bracket, which is the same bracket that these other substances also fall under. Since Jesus said that he came to give us abundant life, it is impossible for God to give you a suicidal thought. This can only mean that the thoughts that these people are getting are coming from dark entities, which we know as demonic spirits. That's because these substances were created by the fallen angels who possessed knowledge from the ancient of days, who targeted our neurological mechanisms, knowing deep truths about these serotonin receptors in relation to how these are portals for our spirit man to go to the ethereal realm. The sole purpose for them creating this is for one reason, to enforce the lie that we don't need Jesus Christ in order to see the deep things of the supernatural. However, this is a lie crafted straight from hell because the agenda of Satan and his demons is to diminish the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which also includes profound spiritual experiences. In conclusion, yes, there is a spiritual world and there are people accessing it through substances. However, the reason that they encounter these dark entities is because they have been lured in by the evil one, Satan, and not God Almighty. I know for a fact that the spiritual realm is real. And also, as I mentioned earlier, I even had an encounter while I was on Magic Mushrooms with Egyptian gods, which is why this topic is not unbeknownst to me. However, as a believer in Jesus now, I know not to access this realm unless God does it for me. Part of the fall of man from the very beginning of the garden is the desire to know way too much. And while knowledge is a beautiful thing and ignorance, in my opinion, is disgraceful, there are certain boundaries that God initiated in the universe 
verse for our protection not to cross. With that being said, 1 Peter 5 8 has a whole new meaning, where Peter writes, Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Our adversary, the devil, is quite literally in charge of the spiritual realm if we take illicit substances to get there. Sobriety is not a bland and unexciting road, but in fact, it's a realm of true joy and protection from dark forces that seek to annihilate us both mentally and physically. If you guys made it all the way till the end of the video, I want you to comment down below, sobriety is amazing. If you guys want to financially sow into this ministry, I do have an offering link that's in the description, and I also have merch you can buy, which is also linked in the description. If you guys want to watch my last video, you can click up here, and if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, you can also click up here. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. May God bless all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, take care and peace out.